We're about to throw the interceptor. We are ready. This is the day, this is the moment, finally. It's so beautiful to see this. I mean, it's finally happening. Beautiful weather. <laughs> but very, very, very happy day. I think the entire world can be happy about this moment. We have never seen so much plastic coming out of Cañadas. It's impressive the amount of plastic that is coming. I mean, look at that. So uh, very, very happy that we are doing this and help in what we can. The interceptor landed in March and that's when the pandemic started. And here we are still in the pandemic, but we got it done. Our key partners here have been the Armada and the UNDP, which is the United Nations Development Program. They have really been essential in all of this. Without them, this wouldn't be possible. It's fantastic to be the first country in whole Latin America and the Caribbean to have ocean cleanup solution here. These are the motivation moments you have. This is going to change many things in the reality of these communities. And as we talk, it's so important that we kind of get the commitment of the communities, of the private sector actors, of the government. I kind of like this needs to be of all the Dominicans. Yeah, the, the locals have really taken a lot of ownership here. The Navy, also the local fishermen have really stepped up. And, and it just feels like one big team, this whole project. Hello everyone at back at Rotterdam. It's uh, great to show you guys our baby here. <laughs> what are we seeing? The interceptor is in full operation. Rain plays a very important role here because whenever it rains, all the plastic comes down going through the river. We just had a, a, a big rainfall and uh, we expect to be taking out a lot of plastic now. such an achievement to have the interceptor in the water and working uh, because I know how much effort it took so thank you for being persistent and making sure that we get to this special moment here today yeah thank you guys thank you guys it's a beautiful machine we have We were all set, we were pulling trash out of the Rio Sama, but uh, then this was during hurricane season and then tropical storm Lara came. It, it impacted the city of Santo Domingo directly. And uh, what happened was that with so much rain, an incredible amount of water hyacinths was displaced. And so all this force until the interceptor caused uh, damage on one of our moorings and so we were forced to take it down for a few months and until we felt confidence on, the, on a new mooring again. All of these are big lessons learned that are going all the way to the Netherlands and it really helps us know what are the limitations of the interceptor and where can we place an interceptor and where can we find another type of solution. If we want to get back with an interceptor in operation, we need to find a solution to prevent uh, what I think to jeopardize the operation. And I need the help of everyone here because it's a complicated problem.
oh, this interceptor has been very important for the future of the organization and interceptors in general. Not only for, the, for me and for the Navy, but also for the engineers and everybody back at, at the office. We've been through extreme river conditions. We've had two tropical storms. It's been a tremendous learning experience in terms of improvement points and also what are the limitations of the interceptor. But I think this is really the moment where we need to step in and use our collective brain in order to make sure that we fix this uh, item uh, and we'll get there. The response from the fishermen have been extremely positive. They seem to, to get it. They're saying that out in the ocean you, they can see some, some lines of, of plastic. All the plastic comes together and they form this really long line, like a cube. And uh, that's what they were just explaining. They were also saying that they often find plastic bags, pieces of plastic inside the, the stomach of the fish. The yeah, fish eat anything. Today is the first offloading since the tropical storm Laura. So uh, we're very happy. It's uh, finally back. It's really beautiful to see how the Navy is now completely trained and have all the knowledge and expertise. They, they probably know more than me of this interceptor. I, I'm looking forward to driving by the floating bridge and see six bins of dumpsters floating through. So uh, it's just a beautiful moment. We made it, it's working. It's kind of like mixture of emotions, but also kind of the message like, we should never ever stop dreaming. I mean, when we join forces, everything is possible. So I'm excited, I'm, I'm, I, can't, I can't believe it's actually really operating because we had these tiny little challenges. This interceptor is much more than what it technically does, which is uh, picking up trash from the river. It's about educating these kids and creating a better waste management structure and inspiring people. These kids are playing basketball here. Anybody who is driving on this bridge and sees the interceptor, this is what we want. We want people to care about this and start the conversation and, and hopefully start some change. I feel very happy, not only as a worker that I'm part of this project, but also as a citizen of Dominican Republic, because this is like a, a huge scale project and we are like a tiny country and we have an interceptor here. So this is very important for us. Bueno, la verdad que eh, el tener el interceptor aquí cambia definitivamente el panorama de lo que puede ser el río en los próximos años. Para nosotros, para el Estado Dominicano, es de mucho orgullo que nosotros estemos apoyando este proyecto. De verdad, eh, agradecemos a todas las personas que han estado involucradas con este tema. La verdad que hemos quedado eh, sorprendidos, muy, muy sorprendidos, de que pueda estar aquí aportándonos a nosotros tanto, tanto que lo necesitamos. I think the fact that we all came together and did this project during an, a pandemic and made it all happen, I think we have to be very proud about this achievement and also send a message that we can do it and the world doesn't need to stop. <laughs>
with this pandemic. The problem is not going anywhere. In fact, it's just getting worse. So uh, let's put our heads together and, and find solutions.